In this video, we're going to show you how to run UAV images through the Imagine UAV process. Uh, this interface is installed and the uh, corresponding layout from Geosystems is installed when you install the Imagine UAV add-on module. So once it's installed, you get this toolbar here uh, that is uh, accessible uh, when you use the Geosystems layout or you can go to the toolbox under the uh, regular layout and access the UAV um, options there as well. I've actually put it on my quick access toolbar for a couple of the, of the functions that I can use uh, so you can do that as well. This will allow you to process images uh, from UAVs on Erdas Imagine Essentials, Vantage, or even Professional level of Imagine. So at all three levels, uh, at the professional level obviously you have the advanced uh, spatial modeling capabilities which I'll show you here in just a sec. So the easiest way to start this off is just to run UAV process and there's not a lot of um, sophistication needed in the input options here. Uh, we can get, we can dial into the outputs later but basically you just specify your input folder and have this small project folder uh, de defined here. You specify the kind of images that are in that folder. So in this case, JPEGs are pretty standard uh, JPEG uh, collection uh, for UAV images. Or if you were to have TIFFs or, or something else, you would just do star.tiff. You would specify if the orientation format is from an XF data, uh, which is typically embedded in the JPEG data itself. Uh, or you can have computer recorder from the iBotics um, UAV sensors. If you have an external orientation input file, uh, you would specify that here, um, and if you're not sure what format that orientation file is in, or if it isn't in the correct format, you can use these, this edit orientation formats uh, dialog here, uh, which just basically allows you to recreate the actual file so that it adheres to that uh, interior orientation file that we uh, need. So, if we go back to the spatial model GUI, um, then we get down to the orientation accuracy. I usually set this to low just to start off. Um, this basically just means your the orientation accuracy is, is low for now and when we do the, the final run we'll obviously make it high. And the same thing with the surface accuracy. Uh, the reason for putting these at low to start with is it runs much quicker and we're not as concerned with the accuracy at this point until we run the high accuracy and kind of the slower um, the processing engine. Next we get to the EPSG zones. I know this happens to be in the uh, Atlanta area, so uh, Zone 17, UTM Zone 17, EPSG code is 32617 um, for WGS84. Uh, that's pretty easy to find out what EPSG zone your imagery is in. Um, just a simple lookup. It does produce three different file outputs. A mosaic file, call it MOS. It produces an LAS file, call it LAS, and it produces a DSM file, call it DSM for output. So if you didn't want one of these outputs, you would have to go in and, and uh, change the spatial model itself, but uh, it's going to produce these three outputs uh, from all the images in the set. So from this point, you could then run it in batch to run it later, or distribute it across multiple machines if you wanted to, uh, or you can just hit run right now and we can also preview the option if we want to. What I'm going to do is move on to the view model operation. So if we click on the view model for that, we can see here we have the actual model that's defined. Uh, it's kind of working in the background of that GUI. And so uh, if I wanted to, I could just uh, very easily remove a couple of these functions, add, remove, uh, replace, whatever you want to do, uh, we can very easily do that. So what I'm going to do actually is uh, add a just a preview option to this, just to show you how easy it is to uh, output uh, something or add something onto this uh, and modify this spatial model. We do have to make sure that our image directory is set. So again, just specify this small directory, small project, and I might want to change some features like the accuracy, like I said. I keep it at low just so that it runs quick so we get the convenience of time. And we also need to define an output file. Call it Tempe. 
and then the EPSG zone. Like we said, we have to make sure that that's uh, set to the right area so that it actually runs uh, for the place that we want it to. So now, when I hit the preview button, it runs through and should fire up a viewer and uh, the image that is the preview image to go along with that. This should just take a, a few seconds because we've got to process that low resolution. produce an output file, which we can actually do a little bit with, but uh, the preview image is actually, there's not a lot to it. So if we look at the preview options, we can uh, do a few things like change it to the elevation and get a good idea as to how that point file was output, but uh, at least we know that it is, you know, it's creating that UTM zone like we specified. Like if you look at the bottom of the, of the screen there, you'll see UTM zone 17, just like we want. So it's uh, geocoded correctly, projected correctly, and uh, it has elevation values based on the color by, the ramp by. So again, this is just a preview option, so it's not an actual file created yet. So we want to, uh, at this point, we might want to run this file and create that actual uh, that temp file that, or that the actual file output. I'm going to kill this and not save my changes and just open up a couple of uh, viewers to show uh, some of the output results. So open point layer. So I have a, a low resolution LES file and then I also have a higher resolution LES file just so we can kind of see the differences between them. which you can probably see is a little bit more, uh, there's a little bit more detail obviously in the high resolution. As we zoom in we can definitely see that in the low resolution last file obviously gets um, it does get kind of filtered out a little bit but that's okay. Uh, if we wanted to we could even um, bump up those points to kind of mimic what the, the high resolution looks like but uh, we're going to leave it as it is. If I add an additional viewer we can kind of take a look at the, uh, the DSM that's created from that so let's go to the DSM, high resolution, load as a relief layer so we can kind of take a look at that. There you have it. If we zoom in here, you can kind of see the features uh, of that, of the mounds that we're kind of looking at here. And then we can also open up the uh, mosaic layer on top if we wanted to, just to kind of show how the mosaic looks from that. And you're actually looking at the mosaic on the, the left there as well on top of uh, the... Oops, put it in the wrong viewer. So just put this layer to window and put it in this view over here. And there we have it. So zoom in and take a look at all the imagery. And then also if we wanted to look at the point cloud itself and in a 3D environment with UAV, open the point cloud layer, open the high resolution last file. That turns on or activates our point cloud options which when we click on 3D show in 3D loads up here really quick and we can kind of zoom in and see those results. And there you have it. Spin around here. Let's use different mounds. And that should be a, a good little example of how to use the point cloud tools, the spatial model environment, and how to add things onto the spatial model and run the imagined UAV process.